That was a tune called The Rattling Clog, and it comes from a book by Septimus Winner. We need more people named Septimus out there, I believe. Uh, it's uh, from a banjo method that he published in 1923, and it's just filled with all sorts of great rags and marches and clogs. This, to me, sounds like light classical music, and these are all the elements that went into the classic style. This is a little farther down the road since the classic style. You could sort of pin it down to starting kind of in the late 1860s, and here we are in 1923 when this thing was written and published. Um, and the thing about this tune, it's in drop C tuning, which Earl Scruggs used to play Farewell Blues and Home Sweet Home and a number of other tunes. So if you're starting in G tuning, then you just take the fourth string and you tune it down a whole step to C and everything else stays the same. So you have the D, the B, the G, the C and the G. And you'll find when you go into this tuning that things are gonna go a little out of tune because the pressure on the head is changing because there's a little less pressure on the bridge since you've lowered the tension on that fourth string to get it from D down to C. So you'll probably find that you're gonna to have to retune uh, the whole banjo because everything goes a little out of tune when you tune that fourth string down from D to C. So just get with your tuner and tidy that tuning up and then we can continue and I'm gonna break this tune down into a few different parts and really most of the action is in the right hand. That's where a lot of the stuff's going on because the, the left hand is fairly simple for the most part. I'm gonna start with the first section of the tune. I'll call it the A section even though in the original music it doesn't call it the A section. And I'll play this a little more slowly just so we can uh, get a sense of what's going on. So one, two, three, four. So there are a number of things going on here. As I said before, a lot of it has to do with the right hand. The very first four note sequence, actually the first five notes, require you to hit first, second, third, and fourth strings in a row. And this has happened in various portions of the site. But um, what I want you to do is you're going to be playing the C chord. Now when you play the C chord, you don't need to fret the second fret of the fourth string because that's already a low C note, which is really nice. That's why this is such a great tuning. So you hit the fifth string, and then you're going to do the first, second, third, and fourth strings. For the first string, use the middle. For the second string, it's the thumb. Third string, it's the index, and then the thumb. So that's how you get those four notes without duplicating a right hand finger. And then it's just a forward roll. And then you go. When you're playing the single string style, you're almost always alternating thumb and index, thumb, index, thumb, index for, for successive notes. Um, with a turn of the century style, and in this music, there's no indication what the right hand is supposed to be. So um, I'm, I'm sort of judging this by other tunes I've seen where they talk about how you deal with this repetitive uh, single string sort of a thing in this era. Instead of thumb and index, a lot of it is index and middle. And this, so I'm applying that idea to this case in point right here. So I'm hitting, this is the second measure. I'm hitting the fifth string then for the first string, which is at the third fret. I'm using the index in the right hand. And then as I go to the second fret, I use the middle finger in the right hand and then back to the index. So it's thumb, index, middle, index. Thumb, index, middle, index. So I'm going. And then there's a pull off here, indicated by a little arc in the original music. And it's not a fast pull off like, like that. It's just up, 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 ba, da, just eighth notes. And then a forward roll, and then. Sorry, sorry once again. Dun, 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 dun. It's all very standard. And then the fourth measure is. 
and then this is a lot more of the index, middle, back and forth. So starting with the middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, middle, index, and that leaves you free to do the thumb on the fifth string. And I'm using one finger per fret in the left hand. Index, 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 middle, ring, and then this repeats. With a little variation there, and then. Okay, then the second section. I'll slow this down a little bit. Three, four. there. Okay, so you're going to go index, middle, thumb, index, then I cross the thumb across here so you're not going to double a right hand finger. So I'm going thumb, middle, thumb, middle, and I'm just sliding the ring up one fret. And there's that pull off again. And across the thumb over for the, th the third measure of this section. Thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, middle, and then just middle, thumb, middle, thumb, pull off. And then the last line is the same as the second line that you played. At least I'm speaking in the original music here. Okay, I'm going to play the whole thing once more slowly and then up to tempo. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm going to play it back at normal tempo. And one thing I like to do sometimes to get just a little more emotion into the music is to um, just move a little bit back and forth, a little closer to the bridge, a little farther away, so you're not just anchored in one place for the whole tune. Probably in the original playing of this tune back in the 20s, because um, people would have been using nylon or gut string banjos. Uh, I mean, the strings would have been <laughs> nylon. and. Uh, they probably were playing pretty close to the bridge to be able to be heard over perhaps a piano or maybe another banjo that was being played along with it. Uh, I'm doing it with picks because this is, the, the, most of you have regular uh, metal strung banjos and I want to kind of duplicate that kind of a sound. So just pay attention to my right hand and see where I'm moving it back and forth. I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm, this is more of an improvisatory thing where however you feel it, you can do it. So here is the rattling clock one more time. Two, three, four. 